Hey everybody and welcome to the video. So the purpose of today's video is just to chat to you about, if you like, some lessons learned and some questions answered from my recent 50 miler. Now it's my second 50 miler of exactly the same route and so therefore there are a couple of things I was already aware of going into the race and certainly mentally I knew I could do the distance. Now, I suppose just to answer that big question first of all, physically where was I at? I knew going into it I'd be under training and that was the case. Um, I felt really good. My legs felt good um, at the start and I was able to keep pace. Um, we'll talk more about pace in a moment, but ultimately the body felt good. Good enough to go as far as it could, which was roughly around, I guess, 30 miles. From that point onwards, it was a struggle. It was difficult. There was a lot of run walk going on, but I still felt all right. At no point did my body completely give up. Um, I just felt just knackered really really tired and um, pretty exhausted and I just was getting through the miles at that point. Now in terms of pace I did have written down on my hand here the pacing of the gentleman who finished in 9 hours 59 last year. The idea behind that was that I knew at each aid station what um, milestones I'd have to hit in terms of the timings in order to achieve sub 10. It was still a really, really lofty goal. And certainly there were points going into the race where I thought this is a bit of a challenge in itself to go sub 10, but nevertheless, we'll see how we get on. I think I was too focused out the gate on pace and I um, I haven't actually analyzed the Strava data. I guess I do in a separate video, but ultimately I knew that when I got to the first aid station, I was up and moving towards the second aid station, I was there then going to be down. And uh, what happened, really between like 5 and I guess 15k was that I realised I could not take on any gels at all. As soon as that second gel or so hit my stomach, um, I just felt like I wanted to be sick and I could just, I was fighting it and I was just sort of almost repeating that sensation in my head and reliving it. So even the thought of having a gel was making me feel sick and then even drinking fluids were making me feel sick. Um, never had it before. Um, I guess this is probably a case of some race nerves, some anxiety, some running too hard at the gate. There's a lot of things going on. Um, I don't believe it was anything to do with the belt. Uh, there may be people out there questioning whether it was the belt. I, I personally don't believe it was because eventually that, that subsided and I was able to carry on running and the belt remained in exactly the same position. Um, so, so that's to kind of answer that question, I suppose. But do I really know for sure? No, I don't. On the fact I just suffered that as a stomach issue, which meant it really kind of affected um, my pace but basically mentally it completely crushed me and ruined me uh, i mentioned in my video i considered dropping out at a session two um and again at a session three at that point though at a session three um you're nearly halfway into the race and i just thought i can't get a lift home anyway um i'd seen callum a fellow guildford trail runner and prior to that i'd seen kevin ben and adam also guildford trail runners uh, and in combination with people who know me from YouTube or Instagram, there was a lot of pressure <laughs> to keep on going. And I think that was um, healthy pressure and pressure that made me sort of consider that maybe I need to give it a bit more time before I make a quick decision. Had I been on my own that day, had it been a race somewhere different in the world, perhaps, um, I imagine I would have been strongly considering dropping out purely because I wasn't sure how long the stomach issues were going to carry on and I didn't necessarily know how to manage that very well. That's an experience thing. Um, because I've experienced it now, I can understand what to do next time. Equally, last year I experienced a lot of cramp at various points during the race and I put that down to a lack of salt. Um, and so this year I really, really tackled the salt, uh, I think in a very, very good way. And I'll talk to you more about that in a moment. So let's talk about the shining star. The thing that everyone was talking about uh, was this naked band. You can see how used it is. You can't even see the logo on it anymore. This, this has been well traveled. It really has. It's been on so many journeys with me. So many of my runs, and I was explaining to people today who were asking about it, you know, I've done probably 96% of my runs at this point wearing this naked band. It's home from home. I've always got my mobile phone in there, other bits and pieces. So I'm used to it being filled with a variety of things, including my GoPro. Uh, of course, I'm not used to it being filled fully. Um, that was new to me, but I was so pleased with this decision. Um, I showed in the video where they put the tracker. It was on these... Um, on this loop at the back, or I think it was this one here, uh, where the poles typically go. I don't own any poles, so never use those. 
they were surprised. They were surprised when I came to registration that my vest wasn't visible. They did question where it was, um, and I explained it was this. So the vest, I cannot fault it at all. It performs superbly. And if it wasn't for mandatory kit, which I'll talk about at the moment, there is no doubt in my mind that I would only ever use this again for any races, really, including some ultras. So a mandatory kit, um, just a little close up, that was my jacket, the OMM Halo, just a quick IKEA bag. I'm sure some jackets can go down even smaller than this, but that's the best I could do with the, the jacket there. Um, and then you also had to have a foil blanket. I've got some first aid in there. I've got some tissues in there. Uh, I had some blister plasters and uh, I also had this cup because it was a cupless race. Now, I never actually used this at all. I didn't need it um, in terms of the cup, but it was there in any case. And I thought I'd just make sure that I've got the mandatory kit. The other thing we needed was a head torch. So I found the smallest head torch I had, which was uh, the, the black diamond, a little spot one. It's a really good head torch, actually. Um, great for local residential rows. So what happened was when I lined these up in, in the back of my um, belt, I had this to one side, head torch in the middle, and then the first aid to the back. I didn't touch it all day, it remained perfectly in place. So that gives you an indication of, you know, answering the question, I suppose, can you fit the mandatory kit into a waistband? Absolutely you can. At least you can with a naked band. I can't speak to any others. I've never used any others. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what else I use in combination with that. So as you know, I was running um, without a hydration vest and therefore I was going to be using handhelds. Um, so just to give you kind of like a more of a close up, this is the Camelback uh, Quick Chill. It's insulated as well. And that is the um, holster, if you like. This is a handheld element that goes with it. So my hand was through there. In the front, it has some tailwind sachets, um, but it just gives you indication. This one is actually a solid form bottle. Um, the only reason why I actually took this one is because it had the space for tailwind sachets in there. If you were to rely on aid stations fully, you wouldn't need to uh, take Tailwind with you. But as I've said before, I feel like it's very diluted from Centurion. I may be wrong with that, but I know that others have shared the same opinion when I've asked about it. That's my hard form bottle there from Camelback. And this is the Ultimate Direction one. This is a soft flask. And you can see here, this is actually what they call the clutch in there with some gels. Once again, if you were using purely aid stations, you could just take the gels they have there and you could use the food. I actually used a lot more food this year than last year. Had some sandwiches, had some crisps, because ultimately what I had wasn't working for me. I couldn't face the idea of having any gels for a period of time. I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna do what other people are doing. Um, I was kind of observing as I went through the A stations what others were, were, were choosing. Um, being vegan, my choices were limited, but I was just being sensible. I was actually avoiding a lot of sweet. And I was going for more savory type options, which which served me really, really well. So maybe, you know, the, with the more experience, I have more faith in the A stations, take slightly less with me. You just can't, you can't be sure. And I wouldn't want to fall short when I'm not an elite runner and find myself wanting. So there's always going to be that element of take more and, you know, I'm carrying it throughout the distance, but I'd rather have it than not, than not have it. Um, so that's what I was carrying with me and that's what I was using. One bottle had tailwind in all day, the other had water in. Uh, if I arrived at an aid station and I hadn't quite finished my tailwind bottle, I topped up the water anyway and then further down the trail I'd just open up a sachet and pour it in. That was simple enough to do. In terms of keeping on top of the salt here, I used um, the salt sticks, uh, this electrolyte one. These are chewable, so really straightforward. I know it says in the back here, um, that you should be taking these uh, two tablets every 15 to 30 minutes during physical activity, up to 50 tablets daily. Um, now for me, I was taking them probably every about 4K or so, or when I felt like the temperature was in increasing during the day. Once or twice I felt cramp start to sort of edge its way in down the front of my shin, which was largely due to the elevation, the way that I was walking up the hills, uh, and slightly in a in a side of my leg, but I felt like I did a really good job with these, and uh, certainly no obvious issues other than that with salt. I know it was quite quite a sweaty experience, but I thought I did a really good job this year, whereas last year no, I didn't. Um, Squirrels nut butter. Now this here um, I've been using as well over the last oh probably year to year and a half. Really, really happy with it. Just slathered my, my feet in this. And I also use, just for anyone who cares, uh, Dry Max socks. 
off the back of this race, I have zero foot issues whatsoever. No blisters, no hot spots, no toenails falling off, absolutely nothing. Whereas last year I suffered a little bit more. Now, I should also add at this stage, for those who don't know, I did wear my Hoka Speedcoats, the wide um, variant, which did give me additional space. So that kind of in combination has meant that my feet have been absolutely unscathed by this experience, which I'm thrilled with, really, really thrilled with. And again, it kind of speaks to the the way that I think I've approached this race whilst I might not have been fit necessarily to go the distance I wanted to in the time I wanted to. I think the kind of the rehearsal and the practice and the experience I've had using all of this kit so frequently has allowed my body to just get used to traveling larger distances and hopefully coming out of it in a, a pretty sort of manageable way. Um, now I did have some questions. I posted this on Instagram and um, I'm going to answer those questions now. Um, so from Ben, did you actually run any of the race? Yes, I ran um, probably the first, oh, until I got to St. Martha's. So what is that? 18, 19K. After that, it was a combination of run walking. Um, if you saw Chris from Here We Are Running's video, he filmed me at Rygate, which is, I think, about 31, 32 miles in, and you see me running in that video. Um, I felt good. Like when I could run, I did. Um, but there were points where it just kept constantly being interrupted by hill steps up down and it just killed the flow absolutely killed the flow so um, it gets to you over time it frustrates you that you can't just keep a nice smooth like get a nice kilometer in there I felt that in the last few kilometers I think there are a couple of quicker ones but again I'll, I'll analyze Strava data at some point I haven't even looked at myself yet a uh, message from Luke how do you get through the mental barriers prior and during a long run um i've always really enjoyed my long runs I, f I find it quite a therapeutic experience it's kind of time for myself um in training i've never really had any issues um, with long runs um because i think the goals set have always been probably more like time bonded rather than pace bonded so i just know that i'm going out for three hours or four hours and i just do that experience and i come back and i feel pretty satisfied with it uh, but certainly this one in terms of getting through the mental side of it i've never really been tested as much as i was um, on that day uh, and I think it's a combination of having some friends at the course Guildford Trail Runners the people I mentioned um, the pressures of YouTube I'll be honest there is a pressure there um, I was thinking to myself you know what I'm going to title it DNF and, and then have to explain myself away um, and then of course the motivation for me was my my daughter and after seeing Harry Jones's picture on his Instagram which I looked at whilst I was climbing one of the hills I think it was Collie Hill uh, so I'm across the line with his son and I just messaged my partner and I said, you know, there's only chance I can do this. And she said, absolutely. And then when I knew that was going to happen, I just figured, let's just make it. Let's get this family photo. Uh, in my mind, I was just visualising what a special moment that was going to be. And just on that note, towards the end, I knew my partner was coming. And whilst I wasn't really in a position to run at 49 miles or so, um, I was intentionally slowing down slightly because she wasn't yet there. And I knew based on my estimated finish time, I had about 10 minutes left to go and she was 10 minutes away and I needed to give her time to get to the location. So there wasn't a slight element of slowing down, but I mean, it just cost me a couple of minutes and I was more than willing to, to wait if I had to. 20 minutes, I would have sacrificed half an hour plus, as long as I got in the, within 13 hours to make sure I crossed the line with her. Um, and actually, she, she responded, my partner, how do you look so damn sexy at the end of 50 miles? It's a good question. Um... I guess I'm just gifted and you know she knows how lucky she is she's done really really well for herself I would add it's slightly more than 50 miles I think it's 51 miles so thanks for that and from Lee uh what food when you were when I wasn't feeling good basically what food gave me a little kick and um I don't know none of the food I really took with me uh what I really liked was a nice little packet of really sorted crisps um they were like some corner shop crisps they weren't even a decent brand and um uh, the big thing for me was some pineapple and watermelon. It just really hit the spot. Again, I wasn't wanting anything sweet, but that kind of natural sugar just really, really did did the business. So um, if you have any other questions you want me to answer, I know it's been quite a long video, but I try to be kind of thorough with it. Please let me know. I'm, I'm always transparent, I'm always honest. It wasn't the best day out for me. I had some struggles. I got it done. Um, I'm very content and very satisfied with this year over last year. Of course, I'm disappointed. I think I probably could have... Um, taken maybe half an hour I could have gone under um, 11 hours 
I would have been nice to have had a 10 in front of it my finish time, but at no point did I feel like I was fit enough all day to go under 10 hours. Um, so that was that was definitely out of the question. Um, but just that kind of early mental uh, disruption and the stomach issues cost me, I think, a sub-11 time. But nevertheless, you know, 50 miles plus is a long way. And so you've got to be proud. Bring home another medal. Another bit of silverware. Looking like Mr. T now. Um, yeah, any questions, just let me know. And I really appreciate all the support of the video. Um, it does mean the world to me. And I know I kind of joke about the pressure of YouTube, but I just want to sort of share the message, I suppose, that um, I am not an elite runner in no way, shape or form. Um, my training wasn't very good. And I struggled to do that distance, but it's possible for anybody to do that distance with the right commitment. Essentially, it was this that got me over the line. Um, and having some heart, my body was not up for it, but my brain convinced myself to keep on trucking. And the heart, I just knew at the end what I wanted and I wasn't going to stop until I got there. So thank you again. Really appreciate your time, your comments, your support, your love. And um, yeah, I'll catch up with your new feature with another video talking about something else I'm going to be doing, I guess. <laughs>